How do you find the king, Mr. Cranwell? I swear to you, Mr. Cromwell, that he really is the kindest of princes. I think you were born at a happy hour, for it seems do or say what you will, His Majesty will always take it at your hand. I am not so conceited to suppose I am anything more to His Majesty than a diligent servant. But His Majesty clearly thinks that you are destined for better things. Which is why he has appointed you his special envoy to the court of the Emperor. He can't possibly do that. Well, well what, what I mean is... Is why me? I, I am nothing, Mr. Cromwell. His Majesty trusts you. Absolutely. I'm sure that you'll be a great success. And on your way there, you'll have a chance to visit the city of Number. The first city wholly run by Lutherans and reformers. A city free of ancient superstition and idolatry. Free of popery and the abuses of the clergy. Your Grace, we are most pleased to see you confirmed as Archbishop. And now, Archbishop, as Principal Minister of Spiritual Jurisdiction in our realm, I ask you to determine once and for all my great matter, whether or not my first marriage was valid. Majesty, I shall address the question with the greatest urgency and presently pronounce my verdict. At the conclusion, of this properly constituted ecclesiastical court, I am ready to pronounce the verdict agreed by us all. It is a pity that certain persons refuse to come here and testify, but that in itself holds no bearing upon our conclusions, which are that the union between King Henry of England and Catherine of Aragon is declared null and void, and therefore, that the king's marriage to Anne Boleyn is declared both valid and lawful in the eyes of God. Turite promissum patris, somone ditans gutura, ascende lumen sensibus, infunde amorem cordibus, in firma nostri corporis, virtute firman purpose. I cannot believe that she is guilty of such abominable crimes. Yet I, I, I cannot think that the king would have proceeded so far unless she was culpable. It has caused both the king and myself a great pain to discover her deceit. The fact is, Mr. Cromwell, that I loved her not a little for the love which I judged her to bear towards God and the gospel. Next to his grace, the king, and yourself, I was most bound to her of all creatures living. You must learn to live without her. Without her, but without her, is not our reformation in danger? Was she not our great supporter and advocate? You'd likely have become our greatest liability. His Majesty is waiting for your grace to discover a reason why his marriage to Anne Boleyn should be considered null and void. <laughs> 